size to back. No flying men. Lying, thieving, bastards, pigs. 
Sheriff, I said my horse was stolen. Try walking, he says. But, but I need it for my work. It's trained. It's an attraction for my show. It isn't only a horse. How many legs does it have? How many do you think it has? Four. Then it's only a horse. It's mine. I want it back. All right, I said, so it's only a horse. Look, he says, you know, the air in this town is pretty bad today. Why don't you get yourself a change and move on, dirty, stupid, lousy idiots? Hi, Joe. Hi. work. You're idiots, too. Wake up. You're neither horses nor donkeys. You eat hay you don't deserve. Get a move on. Work for a living. Don't just Don't you think it too. would be better? Move. We won't if we call the others, to too. Town. No, certainly not even. All in good time. Move. look sleepy. Get into bed and go to sleep. Stay there no matter what happens. But, but why? Don't argue. What do they want?
thanks. Thanks for nothing. And now, what do we do now? We got to move unless you want this man to die from loss of blood. You, get a pick and shovel. And these? <clears throat> Let the horses go beyond the hills. It should work out all right in case there's any more of these men around. <clears throat> Too bad Mimi lost Robin last night. <clears throat> we should keep one horse. We could train him. No, <clears throat> we better not. How much longer are you going to take? <clears throat> you go along with the wagons, Mimi. We'll join you as soon as we're finished. I don't want no gunslingers in my circus. I told Thomas, you remember that, don't you? And he promised me faithfully that his past was dead and buried. And then at the first opportunity, he gets bang, bang, and he knocks off two men. If it wasn't for him, they would have killed us all today. You shut up, Brett. What do you know about it? He shouldn't have hidden anybody. But he explained it to you. Explained it? Hell. I only know I was frightened to death. What is this damn water going to boil? I'll take that. Pull it out of him, all right? I'll cure him. I'll make him well. And then I'll run out, borrow a gun, and shoot him in a place it will take. Mm. Ah. He's coming, too. The young gentleman is coming, too. Good. You are very, very clever. You know, you almost bled to death. And further, you ruined a costume that's worth over fifty dollars. Oh, forget about it, Mimi. Forget it, hell! Now you try and lay still. Don't yell and don't be frightened. This is just child's play. So take it easy. It won't hurt. Watch. Now just lay still. That's it. <laughs> I didn't go into everything, but I'll make it up to you. You can see the show for nothing. Come back. Come back later this evening. Damn it. His 
bring up. That's all I need now. Listen. There's some money inside pocket of my shirt. I know, I know. Don't worry, nobody's gonna touch it. Take it, see if you can find me a horse. You mean? How long before dark? Let me tell you, it it's only noon. Make sure you have the horse behind the wagons tonight. No, no, it's impossible. You can't go away in this condition. You have to think of your safety and the safety of the people who work for you. You don't have to worry about anything else. Hmm, it isn't too bad. You see? I'm going out of my mind. Calm down, baby. Man like that don't take long to recover. Give him some time. He'll be gone soon. Hey, Joe. Listen, he says that. What? Well, he just told me himself. Come on, spit it out. He says he wants to go, right now. He's crazy. Where do you expect him to go the way he is? Shut up, nobody asked you. Joe is right. He wouldn't get far. But if he wants to go away, why should we stop him? Listen, uh, let him be the one to decide for himself. That's like telling him to go. You shouldn't worry, Mimi. To make you happy, we fixed him a place where he's going to hide and nobody will be able to find him. Come on, boys. Let's check the rigging. was right when he said he'd wounded him. Look how nice they had him fixed up. Extremely dangerous. Remember, children, the slightest distraction means a broken neck. An act unique in the entire history of the entertainment world, demanding steel nerves and the maximum concentration. I beg of you, dear people, when the drums are stilled, the utmost, complete silence. Thank 
Thank you. in time. I ask you to resume your seats. <laughs> Nothing to be alarmed about. The show goes on just as advertised. And here's what you've been waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen, the girls. Get out there. Go on.
somebody too many times. You don't have to. You're not the one I'm looking for. But you'll make good bait for my trap. That's the only reason for me to try to keep you alive. vacation is over. undercover. Keep your eyes open if you don't want to run into big trouble. He doesn't expect us. trap. To get out of here now, we'd need dynamite. comfortable and keep your hand away from your gun. You'll be filled with lead before you know where it's coming from. That's good advice. Put your hands on your stupid heads. Come down, you big animal. Since when the donkeys fly around here? Stay away from trouble around here. 
Oh, jackasses. Well, well. Look at the nice big fish. Listen, Trouble. If you come to pull me into some crazy business, I'll make you swallow them whole. No. I know you're retired now. And maybe even started the whole race of giants. Baby doll is my helper. I thought he was your son. He's about the same size. Why don't you introduce us? Baby doll, this is someone from my past I forgot about. Now, if he could talk, he'd say just beat it, but he was born a deaf mute. Which may be the only reason we get along together so well. Ever hear of a man called Finch? No. Wasn't it you got him sent up for hard labor? No. Ever heard of a fellow? No! Have I made myself clear? Okay. I'll bet Sharp figured as much. Who? S-H-A-R-P. Sharp. Stubborn, right? There he is, dying to know what Sharp's got to do with that bastard, Finch. What you figure he'll ask? No. Finch is out of the picture. He'll have to live 200 years to come out from where he is now. He needed 195 less. He flew the coop. Hmm. So you say. Anyway, let's suppose he made it. And that with about 50 others like him, he settled in an out-of-the-way spot. And not by chance. You follow me? Like a hound dog. Because in those mountains, some lucky devil struck gold and staked out claims. They put it down as loaded. Of course, Finch isn't working for himself. He's working for some swindler who wants to lay his hands on the whole area. Imagine that some miners tried to protest. What do you think would happen to them? I can imagine. Now suppose that Sharp is one of them. Sharp, a prospector? Yeah, with his whole family, and he's one of the lucky ones. Naturally, the swindlers tried to take over his claim. You named the price. I did. Looks like the easy life has oiled your brains. Good. Some time ago, Sharp sent for you, but they couldn't find you. They found me, and so Sharp gave me this. It's a deed of transfer for his claim. We pretended I had won at gambling. So I had that pack of wolves following me. From what I understand, you owe a lot to this man Sharp. What is he, a relative of yours? No, worse. He's a friend. But, but my name's there too. That was my idea. You wouldn't want me to be the only one to take advantage of Sharp's trust, would you? The hell you say? You did it to get me into the mess. Spell the words out and you'll see the claims have to be renewed every year. And the year's about up. Sneaky, low-down creatures! You, this bald eagle there! Sharp! Sharp's children. Sharp's children? If you're lying this time, I'll kill you! All cozy in your kennel, huh, big animal? Mind your own business. And you, how do you fit into this story? I have a score to settle around there, friend. The hell with you two. There's no good just sitting there stiff as a board. You're in this too, don't kid yourself. If what you said is true, that place must be a keg of dynamite. They won't even let us get near there. As far as that's concerned, we have to find certain people first. We have an idea. I bet you have an idea.
This here is supposed to be the famous circus. Great. When do roosters lay eggs? A male. A male? How can you tell? Thomas. Where are the others? Gone. Where? Since Joe's accident and after you deserted us, nothing has gone right. And all the competition here in Abilene makes it impossible for us to survive. They all left me. They all found jobs except me. Nobody wants me. Of course, they still come around once in a while. They say they're saving their money so we can all be together again like before. But it's only talk. From what I can gather, they're still in town. Stop worrying, Mimi. All your troubles are over. What? It says that your little troubles are over, and one so big you can't imagine it is beginning. <laughs> together again. All of us? All of us. When? As soon as your feet hit the floor. Yahoo! <laughs> How often must I tell you that I want my bath in the morning in my room? And the water must be hot. Of course, Mr. Collins. My key, please. And remember that I don't want to wait an hour before they bring it to me either. That's ridiculous, Mr. Collins. And the maid must not before she enters. Why, oh, certainly, Mr. Collins. And my suits. I demand. I say I demand that my suits be brushed and ironed every single day. And I don't want to have to tell you again. May I say a word, Mr. Collins? Certainly. <laughs> Go take a flying oh. jump at the moon, Mr. Collins. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Thomas is back. We're going to work again. Wait for me, will you, dearie? I'll be back and finish it. One of these days. How much of it do you need? How much of it do you need? 20 quarts of bright red. 10 white, 2 yellow, 5 brushes. Over here. 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 Damn it, why aren't those valises in the wagon? If this was only gonna do some good. When they know what's happened, I'll tell you this, there'll be a mad rush to get out of here. They already know. Thomas told them. Hmm? You owe us $162.32, McGavin. Sorry I can't let you have no more credit. You give me that medicine, Sammy. My little girl has dysentery again. From eating the dirty things you sell here. You know very well I'll pay you when I get the fare. Walk your ass right out of here, you and your sons. 
but far away. I got to carry out orders, McGavin. I ain't the boss. And the company says not to give you credit till you pay. Believe me, it's no good wasting your breath. No credit and that's it. You've asked for it. <laughs> ain't to be compared to the guns you sell. But it's good enough to make soup out of that filthy brain of yours. Get what we need, boys. You know what's in store for you, don't you? Who doesn't? And that reminds me. You know what, Sammy? You gave me an idea. It'll be a pleasure to kill some of these sons of bitches with their own goods. In there. And take what we need. Think it over, McGavin, before you do it. I've already done too much thinking. These past few months, I haven't worked my claim. No, that can wait. I've built myself a viper's nest. Not even the devil can get in. Hey, Pa. We need lard, too. Help yourself and don't be sparing. I'm going to tell you something. The county commissioner will be here in a few days. And if these fools won't talk, I will. I'm going to tell them what kind of trap you got us into. this year. I can't stay more than two days. Is everything ready for the renewals? Sheriff, has everybody been told about our arrival? Everybody. And all, everything. Don't you worry, sir. It won't be like last year. No, no. Sooner said than done. <laughs> McGavin says he'll talk. You better take care of him. I should be honored if you'd be my guest during your stay in our town. The hotel can't offer you the comforts you're accustomed to. Uh, tell me, Mr. Fisher, how many general stores are there in town? How many do you expect, sir? One. And of course it belongs to your company? We had to take it over from the previous owner. Dead, eh? <laughs> no, sir. No, he isn't dead at all. He just didn't believe in the development of the community and chose to leave. If I'm not being indiscreet, why do you ask? Oh, nothing, nothing. Only curiosity. Well, thanks for the invitation, gentlemen, but it'll have to be for some other time. Come on, Pitt. See you tomorrow, gentlemen. I'll join you in a minute, Mr. Boone. Mr. Pitt, I must say I admire you. Our great country needs more officials just like you. Pitt! Yes, sir. Come up here. Immediately, sir. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Help me with my boots. <laughs> oh, 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 Shut up. Oh, Shut up. I want to talk to him. I've got rights. You can't stop me. Can I help you? No. Let me pass. You catch a cold. You ought to be careful at your age. No one's authorized you to worry about my health. Too many and too well organized, so even the most stubborn men have finally bowed their heads if they want to keep them on their necks. Only an Irish family like the McGavins didn't want to give in. Today, their place looks like a tornado hit it. There's nothing more to do about it now. 
And it's all over for the McGavins, because even if they aren't dead yet, they'll never be able to get to town, and that blockhead of a governor will never know. They'll be considered dead or gone away. And their concession, too, will pass through Fisher's company. Hear that? They're starting again. It was useless for you to come here. And it'll be worse if you stay. Listen, Sharp. You can go around town freely, can't you? Sure. Tomorrow, then, during the meeting, you could spread a rumor. With the spies they have around town, it'll get directly to Fisher and his men. It should perk their ears up. There's one other thing to do before day comes. What? stop. In a little while it'll be dawn and with their craving to go into town they'll die like partridges. They'll fly out one at a time. It won't be hard to stop them. Change the men around. Let these sleep. Understand? All right. Thomas Lipton. Dead. Richard Lipton. Dead. Jenny Lipton. Is she here? Dead. The land and the concession, if requested, goes to their heirs. Also dead. Them too. Is there anyone among those present who claims rights to the aforementioned concession? We do, and it's right here. Our company claims a credit given the dead man, regularly signed by him, of $52.27. The signature corresponds, Mr. Boone. Is there nobody else who claims rights to the aforementioned concession? Nobody who's settling this debt of $52.27, or even promising to do so, wants to make a regular request to obtain the area marked on the map with numbers 387 and 422 on a 20-year concession. Said concession to be renewed every year according to Article 7 of the county regulations. You see now, Judge, we... Don't call me Judge, sir. No, Your Honor. And not even your honor. As you wish. Uh, of course, your company has already prepared an official request, I imagine. 
No, of course. Let's proceed. Wilbert Jones. In the matter of concession number 3725, duly listed on the county rolls as numbers 757, 415, and 528, regularly signed over to him according to the county regulations of July 7th of this year. Step up, please. Are you Wilbert Jones? Yes, sir. Do you intend to renew your concession marked on the map with numbers 757, 415, and 528? No, sir. Hey, well, I don't know. Well, Silence! What? No, sir. What do you mean? Wasn't that you who raised hell last year so as to get it? Yes, sir. And now you don't want it anymore? No, sir. Why? Why? Last year was last year. Today, I prefer working for the mining company. If that's what you want, proceed. Sign here, Jones. For James, too, we claim a credit of $73. Therefore, we have a... Have your request for preemption ready. That's right. That's right. And then show it without too much talk. Oh, oh, keep it moving. That's it. Quiet. Huh? Hoping to be great with your presence. At nine sharp. Tonight at nine o'clock sharp. A grand show of international variety. Directly imported from Europe. Presented to you by Mimosa, the magnificent. A fortune who knows all about you and yours. Attractions from all over the world. Known throughout America and all over Europe. Ready to show all kinds of good people. Remember tonight at 9 o'clock sharp. A circus is a show I can't resist. Pitt, go and book two seats for tonight. You like circuses? Very much. Then book three. Mr. Fisher will be our guest. You're very kind. I'd be pleased if you'd allow me. These artists must be helped. It would be a pity if their show should be badly attended. I won't let it happen. Gentlemen, in honor of our county commissioner, the management of the mining company wishes to invite all of you to the show tonight. All of you, without exception. Thank you. Since you are so kind, I feel I must add that I would consider it a personal offense not to attend the show. Don't you worry, Mr. Boone. They'll be there. Where's Finch? Finch, I. Nothing or almost nothing. We are able to pick off only one who tried to get out. I told you, dynamite's the only way. Too much noise. McGavin, hmm? Mm-hmm. Noise or not, take as many men as you need and do whatever you want. But at tomorrow's meeting, I don't want to hear anything more about those people. Don't worry. Everybody will be at the show with the commissioner, so you can work peacefully. What show? <laughs> Those girls 
makes a mistake. Blow everything sky high. The girls won't make any mistakes. They know what they're doing. Miners on one side, Finch's men on the other, as planned. Only one is missing. One was missing. Have a look. Please, gentlemen, this side. Calm down. I am calm. Good. It looks like a full house. Let's get the show started. It's finished for me already. I, I listen, I, I, I can't go on. I can't make it. Don't be a fool, Mimi. You can't pull back now. I'm not pulling back. I just refuse to go forward. Uh, you'll go forward, believe me. No! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the show begins in a moment. First of all, allow me to thank you for your presence here tonight. Thank you. In your honor, the actors tonight will perform something a little unusual. In addition to their regular numbers, which have made them famous throughout the West, a short pantomime freely adapted from a play by that great European playwright, whose works I'm sure you're all familiar with, Mr. William Shakespeare. Hot, huh? We are firmly convinced that it will meet with your unqualified approval. But in the rare event that it fails to live up to your refined taste, please remember that we are not the authors. We are merely the actors, the interpreters, the humble servitors of Thespis, the handmaidens of Dionysius, the carriers of the message. It is our privilege to present for your enjoyment a spectacle worthy of the greatest theaters of the civilized world. Thank you. Look alive, little boy. There's no time to think about women. Come on. Hey, Pa, why don't we go home? Wait a minute. Interesting, isn't it? Very. Thank you. 
be there by now. that noise? What noise? You hear any noise? Uh, maybe thunder. A coming storm. Storm my eye. It sounded like dynamite. Who'd be using dynamite at this hour? And now, ladies and gentlemen, a nice surprise for each and every one of you. But be careful, because... Because... Enjoy myself. Don't waste any time. <clears throat> and now, ladies and gentlemen, illustrious guests, a spectacular act never seen before, and one which many of you will probably never see again in its entirety. An act to make your blood run cold and freeze your soul. And what the hell are we waiting for? This is it. Go back to your place and watch out. It's a matter of minutes now. To you one of the most incomparable acts in the history of the circus world, the Flying Miners. Thomas Lipton! A man who made no
that son of a gun. Me, you. Murderer. I tell you, look at the fine army we've got here. Now listen, now's the time to get down to business. What's the matter with you? Who? <laughs> you see that? Look at the mess we got ourselves in. I told you we were wasting time with this bunch. Not even an earthquake will get them moving. Cut it out, Hutch. I'll cut it out, but as sure as God exists, if I get out of here alive, I'll come back here and break all their necks, one by one. Come on, what are you people made of? We haven't got time to lose. It's easy to talk. You're gonna stand there like a bunch hey, of dummies. My, my brother and I would like to come with you. God, just tell us what to do. Who, but we don't end up like rats. I'm going with them. Sorry. Don't worry. After all, I was getting bored sitting by that lake.
Hasn't this buffoonery gone far enough? I advise you to keep quiet. The hell with you! Don't you realize if they don't listen to me, they'll all end up six feet under? And so will their wives and their children. Because after Finch takes care of those four idiots, he won't spare anyone! They're not the clowns tonight. You are! Drop those guns. They're ridiculous in your hands. I'll guarantee you'll come to no harm. I'll meet Finch and see that not a hair on your head is touched. But you gotta do it now. You still believe them? Idiots! I don't know what we're waiting for. You make me sick just looking at you. And I'm just as bad standing here with you. Come on, Jack, we're going outside. Charlie, come here and untie me. chicken. You're the one who'll wind up being the clown, Mr. Fisher.
Send you to the gallows, don't you reckon? <laughs> Unless you'd like to try your luck. Go ahead, Mr. Fisher. Show us who you really are. Ha, ha, ha. 